One of the things I've seen this past week has been the whole UFO alien thing. Yes, I was asked about that, actually. What are your in- initial thoughts about stuff like that? So, um, I don't know. This has been the podcast, the Ona 365 <laughs> podcast. No, <laughs> okay, no, i serious. <laughs> Much of what people see is either, you know, misunderstood or easily explainable. Welcome to this edition of the Own It 365 podcast. I am your host, Ben Abusada, and I am here with co-host... Tim Howie. <laughs> I thought you were going to say my name. <laughs> I like to you, mix it up. You I'm left me in suspense. Up. Yes, yeah. I am the co-host. You so, are the host, though. Uh, well, yeah, I, I'm host. You are... Uh, well, no, we're not co... I guess you're not co-host. Yeah. Um, no, Sounds we're both hosts, so I guess I'm a co-host. You're a co-host. Okay. So I guess when the person that's addressing is the host right. and then next time you can address and I will be the co-host. I hope that you have 40 minutes of this. This will be, the, this well, will be the start. It's going to be great. Uh, <laughs> welcome to the podcast and uh, we're so glad you're here. If you are uh, listening, we want to encourage you to um, join us on the YouTube channel over at the Visit Grace Church YouTube channel because we actually have people joining us by video. You can actually watch us talk. Not only do we come through your ears, but we also come through the eyes. And <laughs> on YouTube... <laughs> And on YouTube today, we actually have something new. You should go find because we have some find us because we have shrubbery. New set. There's a new set. New set. And it does look like Ben and I are living in two different climates right now. Ben, of course, is on the top of one of the 14ers in Colorado. <laughs> I'm living in summer. Yeah. We're in Kansas City. So Which I don't know is, what you're doing. Well, you know, every climate is different in every room. <laughs> yes. So I just like to be prepared. Oh, I know. Uh so it's summertime, and it uh, we're actually in the midst at Grace Church. We are in it's Wednesday, so we're towards the end of uh, summer breakout. We just oh, yeah. had summer breakout junior, and summer breakout we are in the midst of right now, the middle of it, and it's been very successful. Are you? Um, I see you've got the shirt on. I do have the shirt. Okay. Have you have you been a, been participating this week, or ha, what have you seen? So I'm I'm an observer, uh-huh. so an encourager. So so last week during summer breakout junior, it's a three day uh, at two of our campuses, our north. Well, of our campus and our Olathe campus. And so I picked one day where I spent the whole day, well, about half the day at one and half the day there. And I walked through, thanked every volunteer, was amazed by what was going on. And then at both locations, uh, when I hit the like the activity area outside, I was playing games with the kids. Oh, I was I was awesome. I didn't volunteer, I was voluntold. <laughs> that you're gonna yeah. you're gonna be doing this. Yep. And so I was the shark of shark at Mint and Minnows uh-huh. in Olathe. And somebody took a picture of me and said, you look like a giant among those preschoolers. Oh, I was dominating, Ben. You should have seen me. <laughs> and then here at Olathe, they had this, uh, they had this like throwing these balls with water mm-hmm. at somebody. And so there, it was the Amazon River. And so uh, we, the counselors and me got to throw, throw things at kids, which the counselors yeah. have been hoping for all week. What a dream. I know. But then the kids were doing it. And this one kid right outside uh, of our North Oak campus took one and just kind of wildly threw it and smacked me right in the face <laughs> between my glasses oh and nose and water everywhere. That was a, it was a divine oh, throw. That's amazing. But it, it was amazing. Yeah. This is Wednesday. We're having two summer breakouts mm-hmm. for the elementary age, one in the morning, one in the evening. And so yeah. I'll pick a day out and spend all morning with them and all evening. It's wonderful. Well. And our, the volunteers are just amazing. Yeah. The people yeah. that are a part of this. Um, we've got people from Grace Church, people from other churches. Yep. They all come together. And uh, and those of you that don't know, this is our uh, our version of Vacation Bible School. Yep. We've, gosh, what are we in the 25th? Around 25th year. year around, of this? About 25th yeah. year of this now. And it mm. just grows and grows. And the volunteers are amazing. They do such a great yeah. job. And so committed to seeing kids come to Christ. And it, it's the most families. fruitful period of anybody's life. So yeah. stats show that getting saved, receiving Christ as a, you know, as a somebody in elementary school or below mm-hmm. is the highest percentage. It drops a bit in middle school and, and high school. It plummets a bit in college and, and then raise up later, but that you'll never have a more fruitful opportunity to share the gospel. And my wife particularly is praying that I mean, we're in a church planting mm-hmm. initiative to send out, you know, a hundred church planters over 20 years. We're mm-hmm. approaching our seventh anniversary. She was praying with the Lord, God, please, would you raise up church planters out of this generation of summer breakout? Oh, yeah. And she said, it was the weirdest word planted in her mind. She said, how many do I, I pray for? Mm-hmm. We come out of here. And she just sensed the word scores, <laughs> scores and scores. scores and scores. Well, scores is multiple twenties. Yeah. And I don't know if you know that, but in our household, we don't 
talk in the language of scores. But Four uh, score and, yes, yeah. I know. Mm-hmm. But but it's one of the ways you know the Holy Spirit. Sometimes He speaks to you in ways that are like uniquely Him. Mm-hmm. And so we are praying for you know, 40 plus missionaries, mm. pastors to be raised up out of this generation of elementary age students. That's amazing. That would be amazing. Well, so it is summertime. Do you guys have, let me just ask you this as a family, you just mentioned Kathy, do you guys have plans this summer? What do you? Yeah, we're going to go back East. So um, every summer, since I think it was our, I think around our eighth anniversary at Grace, that was the year that I drafted my resignation letter. It was more cathartic. I just said, thank you. I've taken it as far as I can go. <laughs> Have fun with all that. Mm. <laughs> that was my, okay. It was a real, it was in a season of depression, about, yeah. you, you know, two plus it's years of depression. 2005. Yeah. Six, it was in that yeah. range. Mm-hmm. 2004, five, yeah. six in that range. And, uh, but that was the year that I almost burned out and waved the white flag and took eight weeks away. Like I, we had back to back campaigns. We had never had a campaign. So we did 40 days of purpose mm-hmm. for the first time ever which was traumatic to some of our members. You know, there's a non-King James only speaker. There's a video speaker yeah. to kick it off. And, and then we had our first capital campaign ever, 2004. Mm-hmm. Never run a capital campaign, a $2 million campaign. The fatigue, the cumulative fatigue of, of all the changes that have been going on, the capital campaign in that, I just, I waved the white flag. I was gonna, I was gonna burn out. I was mm-hmm. on the brink of burning out, which started we on earth through a bad season a really healthy rhythm for us. So now every summer I I gather mo- most of my paid time off, most of my vacation. People jokingly call it sabbatical. And I always say, I've never had one of those. That would be great to get away, you know, paid for three months, six months a year. Yeah, Never happened around here. Right. Uh, but I gather my pa- paid time off and we get away. I get out of the office for, f- for four straight weeks. Mm-hmm. I unplug and I'm thankful to have a team that we can trust that this is not a Tim dependent mm. church. At one point, you know, my presence would have made or make or break the church because you're, you know, in your formative you're years. Yeah. yeah. But as you grow and develop leaders, it's it's the win is it's no longer dependent yeah. on any person. And so the church will go on. So we are we're going back east. Cool. We're gonna do a driving trip back to see DC and then see my uh, daughter who's got an internship on the mm-hmm. East Coast and and kind of do a swing and then and come back. So we're looking awesome. forward to it. Very cool. Yeah. 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 So um so I don't know if you have you we've, we were talking before before this uh, recording. Yeah, you threw uh, me a curveball because you had one topic we we're going to talk about, which was I, movies. Well, I mean, we could still no no you threw me a curveball. <laughs> I did. So go the ahead. Cur- what the, did you bring up? So the curveball is a big one. So yeah. uh, we were talking about uh, we were actually met for lunch and it was like you know Tim I was thinking about this because if you watch the news you know there's some events going on or some things that are are happening that people might go what does the Bible say about this yeah, right. Yep. And one of the things I've seen uh, this past week has been the whole UFO alien thing. Yes, I was asked about that, actually. Okay, so somebody else asked you outside of yeah. me bringing this up. Okay, good. Actually, they passed it secondhand. They didn't ask me directly, uh-huh. but they sent somebody else to ask me. <laughs> so, yeah. Would you find out what Tim thinks about uh, well, the aliens they discovered? Well, that person that asked this, here's your time. There you go. We're going we're gonna to talk about this. We're going to spend an entire time talking uh, to you, secondhand questioner. Yeah. And about... If, uh, who I, I love regarding <laughs> UFOs. Aliens and UFOs. Now, yeah. the thing about it, I think um, the reason that that I thought this might be an intriguing question for people um, to have an answer to is because it's in the news. And one of the goal that we have with this podcast is called Own It 365, right? Mm-hmm. So it's not just, um, just strictly you know, how to read through the Bible, but it's how do you own scripture in every area of life? How do right. you... How do you look at things that are happening, world events, cultural events, and filter them through what the scripture says? What does the Bible and what does God say about this issue? Right. And so one of the things that's been happening is this event. There was uh, something in the news recently um, in Las Vegas. Like a, a whistleblower or something. There was a whistleblower that talked about, you know, undercover uh, or uncovering, unearthing making aware to the public things that have been happening behind the scenes with regard to this. Right. I don't know how legit this person is. No idea. So let me just out of the gate say, I have no clue if that's a real person yeah. or not. <clears throat> Might be the Sasquatch video. Yes, right. And then there's a video um, that someone saw, someone captured. It was actually a police officer captured off his body cam, some footage in Las Vegas showing uh, when he had somebody pulled over, showing something falling from the sky and by the video footage I saw, it looked like, you know, it looked like a legit, wow, that kind of looks like something like a fireball falling out of the sky, like it could be a UFO crashing. 
And uh, it seemed legit. No idea again if it is or not, but it's been on the news. Uh, and then there was a clip of a 911 phone call from an individual who was in Las Vegas who said that that particular thing that fell from the sky was in their backyard, had crashed in their backyard, and there were two eight to 10 foot beings in their backyard. Now, no video footage from that, which is, I don't know, we were kind of laughing about this because like, it seems weird that in a world where TikTok and everything that's, there's so much video of things you no, don't want to see or there's care no about. Ring camera, there are ring cameras everywhere. Yeah. There's people with phones everywhere. Yeah, yeah. Not seeing anything from this particular right. event. So right. again, no idea how real or true any of this is, but it is something that's in the news. And it is something that I do think people are curious about. And then people will ask, you know, people who maybe attend Grace or some of our church family or church body may go, I don't wonder, like, Someone's asking me, what do yeah, I believe yeah. about this? I don't know what I believe about this. I've never even heard of this happening. So I thought this might be a good opportunity to actually discuss some of this and, and maybe unpack what the Bible might say about this type of event or these types of things that are these real? Are they not? So I guess kicking it off, like what are your in, initial thoughts about stuff like that? So um, I don't know. This has been the podcast, the Own a 365 <laughs> podcast. <laughs> <laughs> that was 10 minutes, 11 minutes. <laughs> okay, no, I, I'm serious. Because the question, there's, there is, um, you know, I've heard about this. And it, where I met with the Lord, it didn't bother me or intrigue me or worry me at all. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so let me go, let's, kind of, let's yeah. walk through, we'll see where this mm -hmm. conversation goes. I do think, I do think that, um, that much of what people see you know, they, they had a government inquiry or some sort of committee where they were uh, talking about the UFO sightings with the Earth. And all the UFO means is unidentified flying object. And sometimes they can identify often that there's, you know, weather things or weather balloons or those kinds of things. There's also people who can misread, missee. There's all, all sorts of crazy stuff that can happen. I think much of what people see is either, you know, misunderstood or easily explainable. I start there, um, but I step back and say, what could these things be? Let's take that moment. Mm -hmm. So there's a, there's, cause I don't, I didn't think about it to that depth because I, <coughs> in my walk with the Lord, what grounds me is that God is still the creator of the entire universe. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. And, he, yeah. and he's outside. He's, it's just the, those is the heavens and the heavens of heavens cannot contain God. So God is infinite size, so the universe has a maximum size. And actually, scientists say it's expanding right now. But as it expands, it's a little dot. Even the universe is a dot, a dot compared to God, who is infinite. Mm. The teensy-weensy little universe that we call our universe. And so everything in the universe is under God, is nothing compared to God, is under the submission of Almighty God, and is for the glory of God. So... I go back to, it doesn't matter what's in the universe. They're all under him, <laughs> which is why I don't worry about it. And the other piece of it is um, the God man 2,000 years ago raised from the dead. I mean, I, I base the security of my life on two miracles, the miracle of creation and the you know, formation of this world and life. There's a whole series like four or five miracles in themselves. And then the other miracle is a man who lived 2,000 years ago, Jesus Christ, who died, buried, and rose, and was seen, was seen, was seen, was seen. The resurrected, the only one, you know, even aliens, quote unquote, don't rise from the dead. Jesus rose. So you have these two miracles which ground me that no matter what I hear, no matter what is actually true, doesn't bother me. Because the larger truth is, even if there is something out there, they're created and they're under the thumb and under the glory of Almighty God. So that's why yeah. somebody asked me, hey, what, what, what do you think about this? And I actually, my first response was, I don't think too much about it. <laughs> it, honestly, really not a it honestly doesn't matter to yeah. me either way. Like, so mm -hmm. there's, there's, and that's what it, my faith in Christ yeah. and, and in God as creator yeah. but I think that's makes me thing, not, not worry too much about it. I think that's a thing that, that I think believers or Christians may fear because they think that that, that question is a challenge to, the to faith, to faith and the, the actual belief that God exists, right? They, yeah. they go, they jump to a conclusion that that question means that, that, ah, that God doesn't exist. Well, 
Here's so the your thing. answer's different. My answer, my answer's different. My answer's like, well, if there's something else out there, God made them too, and they're teeny t- little pip squeaks too. Yeah. <laughs> they got no power compared mm-hmm. to him anyway. Yeah. If there is anything, and if there's not, the other piece, we'll throw, throw the whole demon thing into there. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's going to be my question is, so you say that, your answer my, is My larger answer so- is, I'm not, the reason I don't think about it, the first mm-hmm. answer is, I don't think about it much at all. Mm-hmm. And the reason I don't think about it much at all, I mean, I saw the report, read it, yeah. huh, great. May be true, may not be true, don't really carry the way, because I'll mm-hmm. be fine. Because God's in charge of them and Jesus rose and all those promises to us, they don't change based on someone's interaction or some other information God has chosen not to tell us. It doesn't yeah. bother me. And so when the answer to that then is, well, then why isn't it in the Bible? Then why doesn't yeah. why doesn't God talk about it if that if that is real? Good question. So first of all, not everything is in the Bible. Hmm. Everything can't be in the Bible because even the story of Jesus is not in the Bible. So you go back to the end of John chapter 20 and John chapter 21, uh, John makes the comment. He says, if, if the whole world, if, if everything were written about Jesus' life alone, not everything in the universe, the world could not contain the books strictly about Jesus' life. Okay, that's the world. There is, it's impossible to have a, any sort of book. Like if you had a comp- comprehensive story of Jesus, it would fill up the entire world. We no no place to live. We'd have to live on top of the the mound of books yeah. that were in this world. Yeah. And so, uh, God specifically chooses what's in the Bible for His glory, and He purposely does not tell us certain things because that's part of what faith is about. He tells us part of the thing about angels. We'll talk about angels. Mm-hmm. So He tells us about angels, but doesn't tell us too much about angels. And the reason He doesn't tell us too much about angels is that if we got a glimpse of angels. We are so shallow and so uh, akin to idolatry. He says in Colossians, watch out for angel worship. Like if he really told us what's going on, he kind of alludes to it. You know, they're in the, in the background. They minister to people, believers. There's a spiritual warfare going on. And beyond that, I'll give you two names. I'll give you three names. Gabriel, Michael, and Lucifer who became Satan. Outside of that, you're on a need to know basis. You don't need to know. Hmm. So same thing with, uh, there is, say the Bible doesn't talk about that. Yeah, the Bible doesn't talk about tons of things. But at the end of John chapter 20 and 21, he says, but these things are written, you know, out of all the books that could fill the word about, world about Jesus, that you might believe in the name of the Son of God and believing you might have life through his name. So God, literally God says, I handpick what's in the Bible for you in your faith journey. These are the things you must know. You need to know, which is wild. Then when you get the big list of names, like the chronologies, you think, oh, it's so boring. No, no, that's in there. And that's no less inspired than John 3, 16. You know, God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son. This is, there's a huge value. If you don't understand it, that's not God's issue. That's our issue. Why is this so valuable? And so, yeah, there's all types of yeah. things that could be. Yeah. So, so I, I usually don't think too much about it. But then when somebody says, what could it be? Mm-hmm. That's when we go to the next stage. Yeah, which it sounds like you were going down, you were talking about angels. I'm guessing there's, you have some some thoughts or or. Yeah, about what possibly may be happening with re- what we're seeing physically, if it's a- in fact actually happening. Yeah, so let's take let's take the story <clears throat> in in Las Vegas. Okay. So, so what we're saying is, a policeman saw some fun- something fall from the sky and says, "Oh my goodness!" My first thought is, things fall from the sky all the time. Mm-hmm. <laughs> this is not, this is an unusual perspective. Asteroids fall. Space junk falls, and it looks it looks just like he describes. So who knows what that is? So uh, there's so there are certain things that can happen. Totally natural explanation. Maybe all this and have somebody looking through the slats of a door, some grainy video looking at a at a, at a you were talking it's about a, a truck there was a fence. A, yeah, mm-hmm. doesn't say anything. Yeah. A guy could easily have seen an asteroid fall, and somebody else shot another video or made up a video talking about this truck, mm-hmm. which. Literally, there's no facts you have that, that are supernatural or extraordinary mm-hmm. or unique. <laughs> yeah. Now, it's not saying they couldn't be. So there's a natural explanation for that, maybe. There's also a man-made, people could be making stuff up. Another option. People could be just making stuff up, and that happens all the time, the whole deep fake thing. You oh, could take my nice. voice and my videos now, and one of these days, somebody could take that and write their own script and have fake Tim saying things that I would never say. Mm-hmm. And have foolish people believe that. Mm-hmm. Or people, it gets so good that you need the greatest technology to see that. So there's natural things that could happen. That people could be faking it. There could be people that see things that they're confused. They, they're convinced. Some of the people aren't faking it. 
Like they really believe it. They see something and it's like, but now they are selling it. They believe it. Uh, fourth option, demons. Mm. So um, here's a quick crash course on angels yeah. and demons. Yep. So originally God created all the angels. If you could see an angel, whenever angels show up, they either show up looking exactly like a person. There's no wings on them. They show up exactly. In fact, they show up like people, good looking people. Mm. Uh, they show up in the city, you know, they show up in Genesis 18 and Abraham hosts two angels and Jesus who's walking on before he born of a virgin. Two angels go off in chapter Genesis 19 to show up at Sodom and Gomorrah. Right. And then the city goes, wow, those two good looking men right there. And they want to be with them. Mm-hmm. So they show up like people. Hebrews says angels can show up. People have hosted angels, unaware that they're angels sitting in their living room. They look just like people. Mm-hmm. That, that's, that's kind of when they're disguised. They look like people. But then also they can show up. Um, if they show their power and glory, People freak out. They bow down. Mm-hmm. Every person throws themselves to the ground and says, oh, and they try to almost worship them, which is the warning. Well, when God created angels, the devil, Revelation 12, led a third of the angels uh, in rebellion against God. Mm-hmm. And so they, those angels, which were once followers of God, became demons who were followers of Satan. Satan has this unholy trinity. He's trying to fake out the trinity. There's Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Mm-hmm. Father's in charge. Well, that's who Satan wants to be, a fake God the Father. God the Son, there's the Son of God, Jesus. Well, the Antichrist is coming, fake Jesus Christ. And then there's the Holy Spirit, everywhere all-powerful, invisible. What are demons? Well, discount fake Holy Spirit. They're the one-third of angels who are invisible, who are can't be everywhere at once, but do influence people, speak to people invisibly, placing thoughts in their mind, just like the Holy Spirit does. So... It's a pretty light topic. Yeah, demons, <laughs> yeah, I know. And demons fake people out. So yeah. They, so yeah. their their demons' main attack is lies. Mm-hmm. That's what they do. Well, the way we experience demonic attack, we all experience all the time. Just like we experience the Holy Spirit speaking to us. Mm-hmm. Holy Spirit speaks to us. It's a good idea, but we confusedly or arrogantly take credit for that good idea. It sounded just like a thought in our brain. I should do this, or I shouldn't do that. God said that, but you thought you were processing that. Mm-hmm. As you grow as a Christian, you start to learn some, like, I think that wasn't me. I think that was the Holy Spirit. Likewise, demons place thoughts in people's minds all the time. It feels like your own thought. Mm. Um, And so uh, they do, and they lie. Uh, You're fat, you're ugly, you're horrible, or arrogance. You're great, you're wonderful, God's not there, no one loves you, everyone loves you. So, I mean, when they've done... uh, I mean, demons could be faking people out with these UFO things because mm-hmm. they fake people out with seances. You know, you realize all the seances, you know, channeling, communicating with the spirit realm or talking to the dead is total satanic. Mm. Like, no dead person ever answers. Only one dead person ever answered. That was Samuel. God, God made a pass for the dead prophet Samuel to show up for King Saul, who was trying to talk to his spirits. Outside of that, everyone are demons. Mm. You go to a seance, oh, I want to call, talk to John. My, and then they say, the demon, you say, oh, they, they knew this about my grandmother. Of course they did. Demons were back then. Mm. They were watching all the time. They could rattle off a bunch of stuff mm. if you study demonology. So they fake people out all the time, you know, in seances, communing with the dead, answering, being angels, people mediums, people psychics. If they're true at all, usually they're fake. But but if they're not fake at all, they're demonic mm. is what they are. Demons, my, that demon talking to this demon, but in, informing this guy, now he knows facts he shouldn't know. That happens. Well, they could, they, they're they deceivers. Yeah. They can show up physically. They could easily, these UFOs could easily be, I'm not saying they are, but they could be demons yeah. reinforcing an idea. What do you... I was gonna. I think that was gonna be my next question. Was you just said reinforcing an idea? Like, what do you think a purpose in that would be? And do we do we know or can we make guesses, educated guesses on the on the intent? So the goal is always to discount who God is, mm-hmm. to discount the gospel and the God of the universe. So anything that they can do to discount God of the universe, mm-hmm. for example, somebody sees. Let's say. Let's pretend. And I'm not saying it is, but let's pretend it was. Mm-hmm. Let's pretend. You know, it's not a natural explanation, not Say some, that 911 call is yeah. that kid saw yeah. two eight to two, ten foot yeah. individuals standing outside of You think aircraft. angels couldn't show up like that? <laughs> that's, what I, that's what I want to say. Yeah. Or, or demons couldn't show up like that? Mm-hmm. I mean, if, if angels can show up and if they show you their natural glory can freak people out, I mean, what could demons do? And takes that, this, 
So I was talking to somebody. I don't want to get, I guess I'm, I'm in it. <laughs> You're there. <laughs> I don't usually talk about spiritual warfare stuff because it freaks mm-hmm. people out. I'm, I'm a boring engineer is what I am, <laughs> who was a skeptic for a long time. And uh, back 2018, I became not a skeptic. Mm-hmm. And uh, so um, one of the people I was talking to one time um, was talking about experience they had. They were not free. They were, they were living in the, believing the lies mm-hmm. that the enemy was placing in their mind. And this is what they had. One person walked up one day um, and said to them, hey, I think you're doing a really good job. And they walked away. And they heard in their brain, that person's lying to you. They don't believe it. They're making fun of it, making fun of you. That's what they heard. They don't think, in hindsight, when they got set free later, they, they said, I don't think I was processing. I was intellectually thinking. That I, it was like somebody placing a thought in my mind, they're lying to you. Hmm. Well, so if... Demons can be around people and place lies in people's minds about how to even respond to what they see or hear. Mm-hmm. It'd be very simple to have one do a flash of light, one to do something, and then to have some another person, a buddy, part of the hate posse, say, "You just saw an alien. You just saw. Do you realize what you saw? That's a three or four days there. There's no God. Look at that's proof. Like because their only goal is to lie to people to keep lost people lost. It's Second Corinthians." talks about some of these where he took that the devil tries to blind people to the gospel mm-hmm. and they take t- kiss, t- uh, keep Christians people bound up mm-hmm. in fear or arrogance so they're ineffective mm-hmm. useless for God's ministry like that's their two goals mm-hmm. and as part of the process discounting who God is uh, bringing up another narrative to explain the universe anything they'll wow. use anything yeah. including that interesting yeah so so let's say uh Man, that's a lot. You, I, mean, I just dumped a lot. Super deep. Though. And I'm getting a lot of stuff. And by the <laughs> way, just for the <laughs> record, good. again, I'm not saying those were demons. Yeah. I'm saying it could be, na- most likely it's natural. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Or somebody's misunderstanding facts. But there's a chance. Yeah. Because demons fool people. Yeah. They are deceivers. They are liars. And anything they can do. Like a guy one time saw this green person at the end of his, at the end of his bed. Mm. He Well, but he, he'd been a witch. He'd, but part of the Wiccan movement. He had a bunch of spells uh, and his mom communed with the, the, and he said, oh, it's a ghost. That's not a ghost, my friend. As a demon pretending to be a ghost, freaking you out. That's what it is. Because there are no ghosts. There are no dead people you talk to uh, and possibly no aliens, who knows. Mm-hmm. Uh, but if, if they're fake, it could be easily faked. Hmm. Now, let's say, let's say it's real. Let's say there's another civilization or whatever out there. We know a few things, which I don't believe. Mm-hmm. But it wouldn't rock my world in my world if we found that out. You don't believe that there that this. I don't. I don't think there's aliens. Okay. Like, I, now the universe is made to be inhabited. If you mm-hmm. look, uh, Hebrews talks about He made the worlds, yeah. plural. So there's not just not this world. It's supposed mm-hmm. to be worlds be inhabited. And Isaiah, Isaiah chapter uh, nine, says that of the increase of His government and peace, there'll be no end. Mm-hmm. So we have a kingdom that eventually will last and expand forever and ever and ever. I fully expect, I, comparing those verses, it seems like God's kingdom will expand to fill the ever-expanding universe, his ever-expanding kingdom, expanding glory, yeah. to bring more and more glory to God. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I think it'll be used, but it, it, and I don't think there's any other beings out there in the universe. I, if you ask me if I had to place a bet, which I don't bet. <laughs> and so yeah. well, I put money on nothing being out there yet. yet. But if something showed up, I would have a problem with that because yeah. they're created, which means they're teeny weeny, even though they're bigger than us. Mm. And Jesus still died and promised us everlasting life. And if he didn't tell us about it, we didn't even know about it yet. So I don't think they're there, mm. but if they're, they are, so what? In fact, somebody said, how, how would you respond? I was at this person who asked about it. Respond to? To this being real. Have you oh. heard about the, the angels or uh-huh. the, uh, the UFOs yeah. and, and the aliens? Have you heard, do you know it's real? If you th- what do you have to say about that? So my first answer was, well, um, I don't think too much about it at all yeah. <laughs> because of yeah. creation and resurrection mm-hmm. and all the promises of God. I said, but, and I was, now I was joking. Mm-hmm. I said, but if, if there are aliens there and they're real, I plan to go full Will Smith and Independence Day. I'm going to drag one out and I'm going to punch it right in the mouth and be dragging it behind in my parachute. That's what I'm going to be doing. But what if they come in peace? Oh my gosh. You well, just I'm still going to punch them in the mouth destroy- and drag them back in my parachute because I want to go full Will Smith. You just destroyed our chance for peace. I know. Because so, one guy, I go up and I That's pop right. him in the mouth. <laughs> oh man. Yeah. 
So oh it's just been interesting to see how this has been spread throughout the news and, yeah. and you see people talking about it. But usually it's it's you see it in kind of a I don't know, like a sarcastic tone or yeah. you know, like people don't believe it. But right now it just seems like even, you know, I'm using air quotes for those that are listening, legitimate news sources are are talking about this like it's yeah. reality. And so uh, and I think part of the whole thing has been that this has been this has been talked about in official news capacities and governmental type capacities. And yet we as a society, many of us are just like, Meh. or, or some of us yeah. are freaking out about it and others yeah. are talking about it. And then, but there's a whole segment of population that's like heard it and they're like, eh, okay. Yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm like in the camp. Don't... I'm in the camp. That's either, it's either natural explanations mm -hmm. um, or somebody's faking everybody out. Right. That's those are my two. If I'm if I'm picking two, that's where I, I'm camping. Yeah. But if it's demonic faking, yeah, I'm, I'm much more. That's the third option. Mm -hmm. And my last zero point zero zero one is there's, it's something to it. Mm -hmm. But I'm not worried about that either. Right. We're yeah. just gonna go full Independence Day. Yeah. <laughs> Will Smith, <laughs> Will Smith, <laughs> and I gotta say the Will Smith of Independence Day. That's what I'm gonna <laughs> there say. You go. That's, that's the one I'm you gonna need go to that. Kind of Will Smith. <laughs> um, yeah, and I guess that my next question would be, if there were aliens, which would be the one that you would hope it would be? E.T., Close Encounters, Independence Day Aliens, or Mars Attacks, or... <laughs> Not uh, Mars Attacks, that's horrible. <laughs> or, uh, what's the other one? Signs. You remember Signs? Oh, yeah, no, that's horrible. That's the one that I, that version is Mel the Gibson. one I think that's happening right now yeah. that people are describing in well i'd things. have cuddly et et phone home et healing yeah. healing touch that's what i would he's, have he's the only alien that resurrected in those movies that i know he was right? he was the only um, resurrected and he was the only one i think i think it's the only moment i ever saw my dad cry Oh yeah, and he cried in at at it's shit in the heart. Oh, it did. Turn, turn on, on your, your heart, heart light. Turn on his heart light. <laughs> I was gonna sing the song. Turn on your heart light. You gotta put your finger up. Let it shine. <laughs> now okay, people now, really need to go watch like, YouTube. At this point, they're like, "I'm not watching it anymore. I'm gonna go back to the podcast." <laughs> that was because that's really disturbing. <laughs> Uh, yeah. So, man, I tell you what, that is a a fascinating topic, and there's a lot of things you you unpacked, and I think. Um, we were talking specifically about aliens, but there are things that you talked about with regard to demonic activity and influence in the lives of people and especially thoughts, because I think there's a, yeah. there's a whole other issue and topic within that conversation that gets yeah. into, uh, how much mental, time you got, <laughs> right? Mental health and oh, I know. the influence of, of that particular yeah. world. How much of that is, you know, know, cause we're not, we're not a church that's like, Hey, mental health is not a, no. a real physical issue. That's it's a not, real, it's a real thing that people need counseling for, and sometimes right. need medicines for. And encourage that, yeah. like you know, go seek medical help. Yes, and those kinds of things. Our tradition, though, our heritage was anti counseling, mm -hmm. anti depression, anti mental illness, yeah. and and we were set free from that. Yeah. Really, we, we, mental illness is real. We always encourage people to, to if, if you know someone or whatever, to to approach all mm -hmm. three avenues because your mental health can be made up by physical, mental, spiritual. Mm -hmm. So we're always saying, consult all three experts. Yeah. You know, physical, go get a full physical work. We always say, when's the last time you had a full blood workup? Yeah. You can find m misfiring, malfunctioning glands, legitimate genetic diseases, medical, counseling, mental, have someone you're talking to processing. It's hugely helpful. We recommend good, strong Christian counselors in the process, but talking to somebody is huge. Spiritual, there is a spiritual component to mental illness. You can see stories uh, throughout scripture. The day, I had to uh, pause here because I, I talk about demons so, so I don't want to say flippantly. I, I, I like to say fearlessly. I fear it'd be seen as flippantly. Yeah. Demons are a real deal. Um, they are in much smarter than us, much more powerful than us. However, in the Holy Spirit, we have far more power. The reason I am unafraid of demons is not because I have any power and not because it's a flippant topic. It is a very real topic. It, it, there's a demonic realm that's much smarter than all of us put together. However, 1 John 4 is your friend. 1 John 4, particularly verse 4, says, greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. The reason we are not afraid is that the Holy Spirit is so humongous and is unafraid of every, if every demon gathered together with all their power to try to beat up God or go against the Holy Spirit living inside of me, you, or you who are Christians and only those who are Christians, well, it still is like a giant 
compared to one single ant. Mm. All the demonic power is like one single, and that's giving too much credit to the demons. Yeah. There is no power, no wisdom against the mighty hand, the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ, none. And so the reason I talk about that is I had experience. I used to live in fear. Fear is one of the reasons that well, demons essentially use lies and sins. That's what they do. Yeah. They try to keep people, stop people from getting saved. That's their first uh, uh, their goal. goal. Yeah. Now you're a Christian. They try to lie you into defeatism about God, lies about you, lies about God, lies about other people. They're either inflating lies or demoralizing lies. You, you're you're an idiot, you're a moron, you're a loser, deflating, mm-hmm. inflating. You're awesome, you're wonderful, you don't need anybody, you do everything yourself. Mm-hmm. About others, they lie about others. They're against you, they hate you, they exclude you. Mm-hmm. In your brain, you think that, you think you're thinking that. Or they inflate others. Well, they're, they're, they love you, they're under you, they're jealous of you. Mm-hmm. And about God, God's not there. God is mean, God doesn't listen to you. So they lie all the time. The other thing they try to do is get you to sin and not confess it. So yeah. Ephesians 4, verse 26 and 27 talks about that when you have unconfessed sin, sin that you've not confessed to Jesus Christ, it gives, the word in Greek is, is topos mm. or topography, ground, land. It gives them extra influence in your life. Mm. And, and the reason I say all this is that us, one of the sins in the Bible is fear. And if people are afraid of this topic or afraid of UFOs or afraid of demons, the only one we're afraid of where you have a fear is, is a biblical fear of God. Not fearing he's going to hurt you, but fearing that he could, he could. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Not fearing he will, but fearing that he has the power to. And so I don't want our talk about this topic. Do, does the enemy use fear of UFOs, fear of aliens, fear of government conspiracies, fear of demons, Yes, demons use that. And when you don't confess sin, you're giving extra influence in their life over other areas of the way you thought. Oh, that's so good. I'm glad you took a second to pause yeah. and, and clarify that. I think that's great for people to hear. Yeah. So I think it, it helps people uh, interacting with others when, you know, like I said earlier, I mentioned this, just people just living life and then someone comes to them about this and challenging their faith in this way. I think you, you really impact that for people really well. So thank you. Well, it's his power, not ours. Yeah. So good. Oh, I appreciate that, Tim. So great. Um, so let's talk real quick before we uh, wrap up the podcast. There's a few things that uh, that we want to talk about this uh, this episode. Uh, one of them being, you wanted to remind people to go check out one of your most recent messages. Yeah. So I just did a message. I think it was June 10th. It posted, mm-hmm. and um, we talked about. I talked about three L words: liberty, lawlessness, and legalism. And um, I do want to encourage you to go to that. It's week nine of our Galatians series. Mm-hmm. I don't often do this. I mean, I sometimes encourage people to catch up, and I always do. But um, I encourage you to watch this message, which means go to our, uh, watch the video on our app website or go to our YouTube page. Because uh, I, I return to drawing in my message, first of all. Mm-hmm. But I also share um, that liberty in Christ, God calls us to stand on the mountaintop of liberty. And I tell stories, but not often do you hear your pastor talk about weird beliefs I used to have, uh, like neckties and rock beats, Mm -hmm. and sins I used to be involved in, like alcohol and pornography. And so not often do you hear about those things. I encourage you, if you missed that message, please, please, please go listen to that week nine of our our Galatians series called Freedom. Uh, The other thing was um, the uh, the issue. Prayer request. Yeah, prayer request. You had a prayer request. Yeah, I have two actually. Yep. One is, would you be praying for uh, more candidates for our residencies mm-hmm. and our church planters? And just pause right now. The way you do it, you just stop the video, the audio, or in your mind, say, dear God, would you c- please bring more great candidates for be, for be ministry residents? It's been that year-long residency paid right here in Kansas City. Or to be church planters, a year to be trained and sent out to be missionaries with unreached people groups. We just... We're asking God mm-hmm. and asking you to pray with us. God answers prayer. Mm-hmm. And so please bug God in Jesus' name mm-hmm. for more ministry residents, church planning residents. And then just pray for our giving. Uh, our church has encountered with inflation and how it's hit certain people. Yeah. Uh, a bit of a, we, we expected our giving a certain level. We're still, all of our needs are paid for, but, mm-hmm. but we are, we are drawing back on certain plans. Yeah, <laughs> we were in a meeting this morning yep. where to be wise and good stewards, we got to draw back on certain plans. Maybe they'll be out there in the future, maybe not, but be praying for be praying for our giving yeah. uh, at Grace. 
Yeah. And I think sometimes uh, wrapping this into the summer thing, because people, a lot of times in this community, people kind of disappear because they go on lots of vacations yep, and yep. just reminding people, hey, don't forget, you can still contribute and be a part of, uh, of what the Lord's doing uh, through the ministries here at Grace. And our, our church has just always been so generous. And yep, yep. usually when we put out a message like this, it's they respond. Yeah. And, um, and yeah. we're generous too. We encourage yeah. you to grow to tithe 10% of everything and then go beyond it. And and we do this at church. We we give to missions 10% of everything you give us. So we we practice what we preach as well. And we want to be generous as well. Cool. Well, Tim, thank you so much. It was all, all, a lot of fun to sit yeah. down and talk. Sorry for the curveball, but I was like, mm, this could be interesting for people. I, w- so. I was expecting movies. <laughs> <laughs> we did. We did talk about that. Yeah. We can save that for another time. All right. I think, uh, All right. Uh, yeah, we were going to talk about, um, I had this idea of maybe what, since the summertime, what are the top three movies that in your yeah. life that uh, that you would encourage people, hey, you need to go see this because this has a lot of biblical principles. Yeah, I said that for lunch, expecting that. And said, yeah, hey, I, well, I want to talk about UFOs. You're like, what aliens. is I happening said, oh, in this I world? I said, oh, okay, let's do it. Let's do it. <laughs> anyway, hey. it was fun. We'll, we'll yeah. get to the other stuff another time, but sure. thank you so much. Guys, y'all have a wonderful amazing summer uh we'll be back probably in august i yep, think because yep. i'll be i'll be out in july and tim will also be yep. out for uh, for a few weeks as well so thank you guys so much for being a part of the show and uh, we hope that you will continue to own the bible in every area of your life 